Hello again and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers alike, you are very welcome. You can follow the Master's Voice on Facebook. I will leave the link below. If you're on that social media, you can follow me. I'm not yet on anything. Um, it's enough managing the platforms that I have as it is. You can also follow the Master's Voice on BitChute, Rumble, Brighteon. Those links are always in the description below. And what else? Yes, there is a Spanish language channel that translates these prophecies. It is called La Voz del Señor. There is also a Spanish language blog, and I will take some time and start adding the blog link to old prophecies as well. So if you want to go back and read the written prophecies, you can. And I always recommend that you actually read the written prophecies because I guarantee you these messages will stay with you. There is so much teaching in the written messages, so much that as you read, it will stay with you, it will stick with you, it will make a singular impression on you. And that is what God wants. God wants for these messages to make an impression on hearts that I have to say, the majority of the hearts are hard. I know the Christians are saying, Celestial, no, it's not true, we're listening. And I always try to give perspective. This is a blog with, I think about 40,000 people now. And while I give God great, I give God great thanks for every person who has subscribed to the channel. Not all 40,000 people watch these videos. A lot of people are moving from blog to blog because a lot of people have itching ears in these last days. Excuse me, please. A lot of people are moving between websites and moving between channels. And that's because a lot of people are not actually looking to have the Lord break down what they think they know and build them up in his own image. A lot of people have built themselves up in their own image. They have built themselves up in their own knowledge and what they think they know and what they think they've studied. And now they're simply moving between these different locations, looking for stuff that confirms what they believe. And that's why a lot of people reject the master's voice because they come here looking and thinking, well, she's prophesying this and that. And I, I heard about that from this other person, but I can't seem to find, you know, the rapture prophecies. And I can't seem to find the prophecies that confirm my bias. And you're never going to find that here because Jesus Christ doesn't work for you. I work for the Lord. The Lord doesn't work for me. The Lord tells me what to say and I say it. So when you come and you're like, why, why haven't you spoken about this and this stuff is happening? I don't work for you. This is not McDonald's or Wendy's. I'm not taking orders. If you don't find it here too bad, you're going to have to move on or you're going to have to settle down and let the Holy Spirit teach you. The Holy Spirit is looking to mold us into his own image. And if we don't get molded into the image, we're not getting into heaven. I say to the intercessor all the time, I say to them, people miss the point. They miss the point of prophecy. They think the prophecy is a toy, like a wand. They wave it over whatever they like. God is speaking to you to let you know that the times of death and woe and lamentation, these are the things that Ezekiel received. Ezekiel didn't receive messages of hope. Ezekiel received distress woe and lamentation. He said God gave him his assignment and when he unrolled the scroll, it was written, distress, woe, and lamentation. I have the exact and identical scroll. This same scroll, it's not death, woe, lamentation, and a bit of sugar. It's just those things consistently, always. And I tell the people that I speak to and pray with, I tell them, people do not understand what the prophecy is for. The prophecy is coming to tell you of the time that approaches so that you can prepare this edifice for the time that approaches. And no matter what distress and lamentation and woe may be in the cards for you, or what lucky escapes and mercy and salvation may be in the cards for you, you prepare this thing to meet them with grace and poise. And faith. A lot of people need to revisit Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11 speaks of successful Christians. Hebrews 11 is a table of successful Christians. But when you study it, the first group were successful and they experienced great miracles and they did great works and they had awesome escapes. And then the second group were also successful and they were given over to the lions in the Colosseum. And they were tied to the chariots in Rome and they were pulled apart, the arm being torn here and the leg being torn here. And they were pulled apart and drawn and quartered. And they were burned for the testimony of their faith. And all through history, they grabbed them and they said, 
Jesus is not Lord. And they said, I beg to differ. And then they killed them and they did not recant. And the Lord says it is a tragedy, a tragedy indeed, that we have come to the end of time and the worst generation is alive, stewarding the word of God. I mean the literal worst in character, the worst, in godly teaching, the worst, in spiritual disciplines such as prayer and fasting and being able to sacrifice and being able to be still when the time is so, and having the courage to stand up and speak when the time is so, the absolute worst. This is a generation that wants to be coddled. This is a generation that is so fed on lies that if you actually don't keep up the lie feed, they become belligerent, and I bet somewhat violent if I was actually standing in front of some of them. If you don't tell them what they want to hear, then obviously you have to be fake, and why must I be fake? because a person like me is dangerous to the false reality of today's church. A person like me has come with a torch to burn it to the ground and stand in the glow of the flames and say, praise the Lord, that the false church is burning to the ground with her false expectations so that out of the ashes, the bride can arise and sing. Let us hear the prophecy of the Lord today. The prophecy is called America will be like Zimbabwe, part two, April 7th, 2023. So this was one day after I received the first word from the Lord about how we are about to go into a no money life. Cash will be hard impacted. Cash will be taken away from us. And the Lord spoke to me by giving me a dream about how the Omni system here in the United States, in New York City, at least, um, that works with putting your card into the machine and then loading it up with physical cash, bills or coins is going to be taken away and you will have to only use digital money to get on the metro system, which is the lifeblood of New York City. Honestly, most people here don't drive. It's not financially worth it. Everybody's on the train and the buses and Uber. So this prophecy is called America will be like Zimbabwe part two, April 7th, 2023. And the banner scripture is this, command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant, nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. This is a wonderful verse that is simply telling us that while money has its uses, what pleases God is to be rich in good deeds, to be the kind of people that are willing to be generous to others and willing to share what we have. And this is such a perfect verse that the Holy Spirit led me to because a society is going to grow up in the United States where people are going to have to be generous and willing to share, especially their skills, their abilities, and their goods, unless it's going to be very, very difficult. So on the morning of April 7th, which was just a few days ago, right after I woke up, the Lord said to me exactly what he had said the day before. Celestial, America will be just like Zimbabwe. Now, before God said this over, the, over those two days, April 6th and April 7th, yes, I brought a lot of prophecies here from the Lord, some of them dating back all the way to 2015. I said that I used to have dreams of myself and my siblings walking in a destroyed America. So this was not a nice America, fixed America, a, a totally wrecked America, messed up completely. Society as broken down as you want to get lawlessness and whatever. And we in those days just used to trudge from place to place. In the end times, there is so much walking to be done. Just walking, obviously, because nothing works. And I'm talking about miles and miles and miles from one state to another, like on a journey, like you see in those old movies from Middle Earth to, I don't know, what other part of the earth. So um, we were walking on money. We we're walking on the pound, the Deutschmark. I remember we we're walking on the Norwegian Krone, I think it's called, K-R-O-N-E, and definitely walking on the U.S. dollar. And then as the years progressed, I would have dreams where we were walking on pearl necklaces, we were walking on gold, we were walking on silver, we were walking on diamonds. These things had been cast away from their owners. And God was using me to show that cash is going to become useless and people are going to be hoarding the gold and going like, I hedged myself against the crash. And then guess what? Another crash will come. Silver useless, gold useless, everything useless. So these things are at best 
a stop gap between the time periods. So I've brought many prophecies of financial decline, but God has never said that this financial beast called the United States, this raging bull of a money monster that the whole world knows is going to come down to the level of one of the starkest examples of financial ruin and collapse the modern world has ever seen. It's either Zimbabwe you'll be talking about or Venezuela you'll be talking about in modern history when you're talking about how money was so ruined and the entire society fell in on itself and forced the citizens of these countries to adopt a totally different way of life. So when the Lord said, America will be just like Zimbabwe, I took my book and I started to write what he was saying. So what I'm reading to you is what the Lord said. America will be like Zimbabwe. There will be a nationwide systemic crash where everything fails at once due to a collapse, collapse of the central banking system and a collapse of the US dollar. Everything will happen at once. It will all go down together. So I'm going to attempt to move my way through this prophecy, tying it back to things from before, just in case people think that I'm watching Sky News to get the prophecies. I am not. These things are documented and written down. Each prophecy has a name. So I will try to link back to a few of them. So in the prophecy that is called the meltdown of the banking system, I saw large, tall skyscrapers in the banking district you know, uh, Bankers Row, um, they were all on fire. And this fire was so terrible that it's not like the buildings were on fire and then they had a chance. The fire was so terrible that the buildings were literally melting. So they were melting into puddles of iron that were dripping down them. I said that they looked like huge metal popsicles sweating it out in the summer sun. They were melting and every single building was on fire. The tall buildings were on fire. The medium buildings were on fire. The low buildings were on fire. It was all on fire. The entire banking system was burning. And I said, what I saw is that some banks burned to the ground. So they burnt clear down to a pool of iron and they absolutely did not exist anymore. And then some banks burned down midway and some banks burned down three quarters of the way. And then all of a sudden the fire would go out and the building would fuse into this hard lump. So they all experienced collapse, but none of them did well. No bank actually existed above the halfway mark. They all suffered terrible damage in that financial fire. And the Lord said, just not to believe whatever they're telling you on TV. America's drunk the Kool-Aid, I mean, sucked it in deep, created for herself a phrase that is called too big to fail. Too big to fail will fail because the Lord says that the financial crash that is coming, even the pundits and the experts who have studied 1933 and written books about 1929 to 1933, they will see what they've never seen before. The whole economy, he said, will implode. That's why there's another prophecy that is called economic collapse worse than 2008. And so that's what he said, that every bank is going to fail. That not a single one of them is going to escape the collapse. So if you were trusting in what TV is telling you, this is why this is not TV. This is the master's voice prophecy blog where we bring to you, me and the Holy Spirit, the truth above what TV says, because TV lies. The next part he said is everything will be unavailable all at once. Low availability of goods and low availability of services. The Lord said that entire businesses and brands that we know are going to disappear overnight. This is someone doing business successfully the week before suddenly filing for bankruptcy and totally disappearing from the pool of available goods and service providers. Seemingly overnight, homes and storefronts will shutter in America as people go bust off the back of a financial crisis. Things will happen much faster than with other financial crises, and it will be a radical snowball effect that will be beyond anyone's ability to fix. So here in the United States, the anyone who fixes things is the Fed. Fed does financial, government does financial policy, I think it is, and the Fed does monetary policy, and 
the Fed kind of has the say over the government, even though they're probably in cahoots at the back. But the Fed is always the one who fixes it. The Fed is always the one who comes forward and clears its throat and says, this is terrible systemic failure and everything is just so terrible. And we're going to do something about this. And they move the numbers around and they go and print a ton of money that the country does not have. And then they strive to bring normalcy back to the abnormal way of doing business that this country has. But the Lord says that the fixers will not be able to fix this one. And we're going to see well-known businesses and brands that have always existed completely wink out like a candle. <sighs> one minute they're there and the next minute they're filing for bankruptcy and they will be gone from the available pool of goods and service providers. What happens when people that carry a large part of the society, the people that everybody depends on for shoes or the people that everybody depends on for electronics, what would happen if major players in the industry had to file for bankruptcy? And what would happen if some of them in the service industry especially were to shut their doors. What would happen in a world, and I said this several videos ago, and now it's actually happening, where the McDonald's of the world shut their doors, where they have low-priced meals that a ton of people who don't earn much depend on? What happens when these people are no longer able to have a McDonald's in your neighborhood or able to have a certain McDonald's or a certain bank in a town? What happens to those people who are impacted by the loss of people, the loss of industry players that a lot of people depend on? There's a gap, and that gap will cause pain in people's daily lives. He said, there will be system failure in America, a nationwide crisis stemming from the fall of the banks and their illegal practices that no one has been monitoring until it got too dire. System failure will cause everything to fail. There will be lack of commodities, meaning not enough goods being traded on the open market. There will be high prices. Superinflation will attack America and take most consumables right out of the reach of most people. For the ordinary person, life is about to be very different. So this lack of commodities thing and high prices, I've been speaking about this stuff in 2019 when all the stores were open and we were free to walk around as we pleased. That prophecy is called World, World Politics America. And I'll just take a moment and read a bit from that. Just a moment, please. So the prophecy is called World Politics America. And I received this message June 16, 2019. And in this message, I heard a pronouncement from heaven and the pronouncement said, trade and economic warfare. Trade and economic war is declared in the heavens against the United States of America. And then I heard hardships, hard times, lack, and the beginning of sorrows in the United States of America. And I began to see that merchants were stressed and perplexed. Their goods were not coming in. The shipments were stuck at sea. Goods were delayed and it was causing price fluctuations in the market. People needed more stuff than they could supply. And the Lord showed me America as a body with all her arteries clogged as the things that we needed were no longer easily available as we needed them. And I also started to see agricultural failure in the country. So the crops were not coming in. America will experience horrible and systemic droughts, meaning season after season, when people keep thinking, well, I hope we have a better season next year and I hope we get more rain. God is going to withhold rain from this country because biblically, that's what you do when countries are in sin. That's one of the biblical punishments. You withhold the rain from those nations. And so because the food was not so much anymore, the fancy supermarkets and normal supermarkets began to raise their prices. And I saw one very famous wealthy brand here in the United States, basically Whole Foods, beginning to raise their prices insanely. I saw that supermarket actually hiring off the book workers to change the prices and the stickers on their stuff. So they had their normal daytime workers. And then in the evening, I saw that they were bringing in people who looked South American to peel off those stickers and put in new prices. And then in the morning, the workers who come in with all the benefits and everything will just go, hmm, okay, that's a different price. And that's how it was. 
So God said that he will, he will choke America economically. And what I saw happening in the spirit, because things will happen here, um, things will happen here on earth. And then we won't have an understanding and we'll just think, why is this happening? And the government is making bad choices. But when God fights you, nations of the world, listen, when God is your friend, it is impossible to keep prosperity away from the government. They will make good decisions. They will be good leaders. They will bring out civic projects that help people who are out in marginalized areas. They will build, build hospitals. They will build roads. They will minimize their theft because I don't think there's a single government that doesn't steal except maybe those really bougie ones in Europe. But they will not be a thorn in the side of the people. This is what happens when you are a righteous nation and God is your friend. But when you are a nation that opens the door to whoredoms, as we do here in the United States, when Ricky Bob can just wear a dress and Janet decides that she doesn't want breasts anymore because they're hindering her from being the man that she knows she can be, God becomes your enemy. And once heaven begins to fight you, those angels will do their job to perfection. So what I saw is I saw people... There's America here at the bottom. And then I saw people in the spirit realm and they were bringing huge mountains of earth, just like they used to lay a siege in the old days. I saw people bringing in huge mountains of earth using elephants and they were building up a siege war against a mighty city that was flying majestic flags in the distance. They dug deep trenches around this city and they filled massive siege earth, siege mounds against Babylon. This city was called Babylon in the vision. And these men surrounded their siege walls with the city in the middle. And I saw that whoever was approaching this city for commerce and to do business with her was turned away by these men. They were refusing people to come and do business with Babylon no flow of commerce and trade was allowed to enter her and no one who was inside the city was allowed to come out. And so the city was being slowly starved. And I saw that the people living in this city called Babylon began to cry for bread. But Jesus has sent these men to lay siege against Babylon. And at his instruction, they were going to stay there and punish her. And so this is one vision that the Lord gave me. I had this while I was fully awake. Another one is called a vision of America. And I'll be back with that in just a moment. This was, this one I received, um, March the 28th, 2020. It's called a vision of America. And God was showing me how America would change in the future. And what I saw in the first part of the vision was American grocery shelves. I'll just cover this part for now. The shelves were empty. And I have been bringing this prophecy since even 2019 that in the stores, the shelves were empty. And in one vision that impre impressed my heart, I'm always talking about it. A woman, this vision is actually, the prophecy is called Desolations Are Determined Part 3. And I received that in June of 2019. And one, it was a series of many visions. And one of them, a woman went into the supermarket and she wanted to get milk. She had about three or four small kids. And so they were still, you know, enjoying milk at that babyish age, different ages. And she went in to buy their milk and the milk price had spiked so much that the woman had an outburst at the register. She yelled at the cashier. She said she was holding the milk and shaking it and saying, what kind of price is this? What are you people trying to do to us? What, what, kind of, what kind of nonsense is this for milk? And the cashier was trying to be professional, but God was showing me in the guy's heart that he was angry. And what he was thinking in his heart is, I don't make the milk. I don't make the prices. I don't even know how this stuff gets here. Why are you yelling at me? You know, I've got my own problems. But the, he was mad because it's not his fault. And the woman was mad because it's not her fault. This is the world that we were living in where the small children are not going to get the kind of milk that they need because of the external circumstances that was happening. So in this one, in March, 2020, I was seeing US grocery shelves that were empty and the specific items that were missing were flour, sugar, oil, and that hit the fast food industry very hard. And in this vision, as I was looking at specific items that were missing from our shelves, they were unavailable 
but they were also not coming back. So there can be stuff that's missing and unavailable. And the store goes, oh, no, you know, that stuff is coming. And they tell you whatever stories that they tell you. But eventually, if you go back, stuff will be there. And the Lord has said that America doesn't actually notice her decline because she thinks that these longer and longer breaks before a product comes back is just the supply chain. But God says that it's actually the draining out of the country's lifeblood and eventually stuff will stay missing and unavailable forever. It will not be restocked. It will not come back. And so I was looking at the empty shelves across the USA and I heard a groan. This groan was coming from like a million voices. It was this low, like, oh, and it was rising. And then it headed up to a wail, a scream. And that sound was become, because America had no wheat anymore. America could not make bread. And you just need to think of everything that people live on here, pizza and burgers and, you know, the stuff for tacos and sandwiches. And that's what people eat. There was no wheat to make bread and the fast food industries were struggling. And without that, other things were becoming scarce. Sugar was a very hard thing to find. And this was the first prophecy in which God mentioned to me that America is going to have a black market. So as I continue this prophecy, you will hear America is going to have a black market. Sugar began to become a black market commun um, commodity along with oil, along with chicken and meat and things like that. And basically you had to know a guy who knew a guy to be able to get this stuff. So it was not readily accessible to everyone anymore. You had to have a hookup. You had to know someone, or maybe you, you know someone who's in the supermarket who will text you and say, they just brought some in, you know, but we we're limited. I can only get three. So you need to send three people down here and you guys don't come together. Act like you don't know each other so that you get three, 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 and then you can get nine and take it home. That's what the society became like. And in this prophecy that I've received, this, this recent one, you will hear the same thing. And so I saw that America became shell-shocked because we lost the staple foods that we depend on, sugar. I saw that without fizzy drinks and without the sweet products and the sweeteners that people are addicted to, it was tough as nails in this country because millions of people were on a forced detox of sugar that they've been pumping into their system for years. And so I go back to this prophecy where the Lord was, the prophecy is called America will be like Zimbabwe. And here we are, lack of commodities and high prices. God says that super inflation will attack America and most stuff is gonna go right out of the reach of most people. And the ordinary person's life is about to become very different. And so I saw, he said that lack of services will be here. Stores will close, businesses will go under and nobody will have any jobs and employment crisis will occur. And the price, the prophecy for that is called employment and wage crisis for America. So you might be wondering, how can God say nobody will have any jobs? When, some, when the Lord says nobody, he's not meaning every single human being. He means that it will be so widespread to have a job that it will seem like nobody's working. And that's what happened in the Great Depression. It was widespread unemployment almost every industry had crashed. And so there were no jobs to do. Severe lack of goods. There won't be anything in the country to buy or sell except a few people who either have connections to stay open. This means you've got connections, people in high places that can maybe bankroll you on the sly and keep your business open, or maybe government connections will do that. Or maybe you've got enough money to do that. If you're a Walmart, you can stay open against the wind. And he says there's also a few who will have the kind of money that can handle astronomical prices. So not everyone will be without chicken and beef. People who can't afford it will still eat it. Said that America will have a lack of luxuries. Everything that panders to her lusts. All the stuff she does for fun, entertainment, taking vacations, enjoying her hobbies, pampering herself, getting gifts for yourself and getting gifts for each other, the excessive life, travel, all of that is going to go down. The Lord said that theme parks, vacations, amusement parks, the shopping districts, stores, 
collectibles. A collectible is a store, for instance, that will only sell a particular luxury item, like these stores that will just sell Chanel only or Gucci only or Birkin thing only. So collectible where people go to get a special handbag or special sneakers or custom jewelry, all that, the Lord said, it's going to go down. These things, holiday destinations and things like that, they're going to start going broke and shuddering in the industry and coming to an end. And he said that life will be dreary and intensely difficult. And I would just like to say here that it is at this time that people who have genuine faith will truly shine. Because the Bible says that I know how to abound and I know how to be in lack and keep content in all those states. Most people don't know how to be content when they lack. They moan, they complain, they call God names. They say, if God was a good God, then what, what, what? They just open their mouth and say things that basically shoot their spiritual lives in the foot. And then they are offended at God because they never learned that godliness with contentment is the real gain. It's okay to have what you have, but many people, this is money. They assume the identity the money gives them. And so when the Lord of hosts begins to punish this nation and strip off her identity, then you will hear the sound of a hundred, two hundred, three hundred million voices complaining, how can we be a Christian nation and God made us naked? So America will have empty shelves, no money, severe shortages, and a black market. A parallel market that operates with separate prices that reflect the real economy adjusted for inflation. This means that if eggs really cost $60 on the black market, you will have to buy them at that price. We do not know if the government is going to be able to compete with the black market because in Zimbabwe, they failed miserably. They tried to crush it nine ways to Sunday and the black market was like, see you tomorrow at opening of trading. Black market is still there. And so the government will struggle to maintain a sham economy and they will use rationing, limitations, and price controls. Rationing is where one person is only entitled to a certain amount of goods and you can't buy any more no matter how much money you have. Limitations, only a certain kind of person will be able to access a service or resource. So they, this might be through favoritism. This might be through nepotism. This might be through um, somebody genuinely helping you, or you will have to apply for special permissions to be able to access that resource. So maybe they might say, oh, we can only have 10 shoe stores open, and then we're going to open up a tender so that you can compete for them, and then we'll see who we give the licenses to, that kind of thing. And price controls is where the government intervenes in the market and artificially fixes the price of goods because inflation is galloping at such a rate that you can't have them truthfully saying that deodorant costs $700. So the government has to step in and fix the price and a merchant cannot sell it more. Even if, please listen, this is why people will go out of business. If you need to get the deodorant from France and France is having its own issues thanks to the US dollar and can only supply a certain good at 500 and you want to bring it in, you bring it in at 500 and the government tells you exactly as they are doing in Zimbabwe. The government tells you, well, that thing can only sell here for 60 cents. Please tell me, what is the incentive of a business person to buy a good at 500 and then be forced to sell it to you at $50? He's taking a massive loss. He's simply going to decide, this is not a commodity that's worth it. And then he just won't bring in that good anymore. And then that's how the shelves get empty. It won't be available anymore. And so price controls nearly always come in to hide the fact that there is runaway inflation. And since we are still denying the obvious here in America and saying that we're still in single digit inflation, well, there you go. The Lord said resources will be scarce and there will come an intense dependency in the population. Americans will become severely dependent upon the government for basic needs 
and public funds will go towards social programs as more and more people need to rely on social security, welfare, and other government help programs than has ever be seen in this nation's history. So God is saying that we are going to see a historic rise in the need for things like unemployment benefits and welfare and social security, because more and more people are simply not going to be able to make ends meet by what they earn. And the Lord here said this, America will come to the point of fulfilling Isaiah's prophecy in Isaiah chapter three, verses six to nine. Please listen. When a man takes hold of his brother in the house of his father and says, you have clothing, you be our ruler, and let these ruins be under your power. In that day, he will protest saying, I, I cannot cure your ills. For in my house is neither food nor clothing. Do not make me a ruler of the people. This is a tough saying. This prophesied by Isaiah is speaking to a time when people are so poor that we're no longer gauging who's a big man and who's a big woman by how many degrees you have and whether you ever got to travel overseas. How well traveled are you and how well studied are you? And do you actually know the different arias in opera and things like that? All that stuff is going to go away. The hierarchy of who is a big man will be, you have clothes, you're not naked, you have clothing, they will say to people. You're not like us. You're better than us. You have clothing. So come and rule over us and let our ruins be under your power, meaning that we are wrecked. Our homes are wrecked. Our savings are wrecked. Everything is wrecked. But you you seem like a guy who has it all together because you still, you're still dressed. You're still covered. And in that day, the man that they approach to tell him this, come and lead us, come and teach us, come and tell us, he will say, I can't help you. I cannot cure your ills because he will say, my house has neither food nor clothing. Don't choose me to be a ruler over you. This person will say, I only have enough for me and I cannot help you. And I have been saying for years here that that is what is coming. So... The Lord says that people will have to find contractors and suppliers on the side, someone who can help them by giving them goods and services because those goods and services will no longer be available or listed on the open market. Available means the thing has completely fallen away. So all this gel nails business, ladies, I don't know what to tell you, but it says listed on the open market. This means that the gel nail people will begin to do it in their homes if they can get away with it. So when something is listed on the open market, you can look it up in the yellow pages or just Google it and it will say, we're here and we're open. But after some things are driven underground, you will have to look for them because they won't be on the open market. And God says that this is known as a parallel economy. So the government will be saying, you have to apply for a permit and then you can, you can sell fast food. And we're only approving 16 permits across the United States for this year. So there's tons of people competing to get those 16 permits. But then there's Matilda who can still make burgers at home. And if your child needs meads, meals, or if you still want a burger, you can call a person who knows that she's doing it in her house and then you can find it. So a parallel economy is where citizens will pool their skills and their resources to realize common benefits that are not openly available anymore. And this always happens when the real economy has so many people shutting down that the citizens realize if we don't get together, if one of us is a doctor, then we need to start making house visits because now the, the hospital is either not functioning properly, too many people are dying from bad health care or whatever it is. So I'm a doctor, I'm 30 years a doctor, I'm going to offer my services and I'll come over and I'll help you. Um, I made this example in, recently in a prophecy. I'll come over and I'll help your wife give birth and then your daughter who's 25 years old I'm just gonna ask for two hours every day to help my child with school. So he says a parallel economy is where people come together as a collective to realize common benefits from their skills, something like a commune, because the real economy will be failing so fast and providers will be dropping out of it so fast that people will realize they have to mobilize and find ways to meet their own needs or they will starve. 
So God says that this employment crisis that is coming is going to deepen into a systemic wound. So right now they're telling us that we only have a scratch, that everything that happened with SVB and the other bank was their problem, their mismanagement. But that scratch is going to get infected and gouged and America's whole face is going to rot and her body is going to catch that gangrene because it is not just those banks. It is an underlying problem with the system itself. And in the prophecy that is called nothing but scattering, God basically said that America does not get to kick the can down the road anymore. He said he's not going to tolerate it. This nation will not be allowed to do it. Can kickery ends here. She is going to pay her debts, pay her dues, will not be able to get creative with the numbers, will not be able to shift assets and pretend and get and flood the market with bonds anymore or all the other complicated stuff that I don't understand. He said that it's going to it's going to come to a screeching halt and they will not be able to lie or cover it anymore. So the U.S. workforce will be slashed so brutally, the Lord basically said, that some people will lose their lives in the job losses, that people are going to commit suicide exactly as they did during the Great Depression. Because when they're let go suddenly, without warning, without notice, and without adequate recompense, he said that people will start to feel desperate and hopeless because their mortgage and their other bill payments will begin to spiral out of control. America will lose credibility, stability, and global clout. She will be like Zimbabwe, a textbook example of the central banking system gone wrong and wild inflation out of control. He said cash is no longer used in Zimbabwe. Cash is no longer the focus of the economy in Zimbabwe. Cash is not king in Zimbabwe. They almost solely use online money. Zimbabwe has a parallel economy and a black market. In Zimbabwe, cash is hard to find and it is sold at a premium. And when I went to look this up, it means that the money is sometimes sold for more than it's worth. You sell $100 to someone for $120 value and they'll pay it because they need cash quick. Zimbabwe has no local currency anymore. It has lost its identity and it is fully dependent upon the US dollar. The Lord said that America will become like Zimbabwe. So imagine what will happen to a society like that when the dollar crashes. Indeed, it will become even worse. It will be sore devastation for every nation that is tied to America by apron strings when the dollar crashes. Because when her economy falls, theirs will go tumbling with it. So that means basically that if you are Canadian, Mexican, European, uh, you can basically read this prophecy exactly as if God was talking to you directly. And so the last thing the Lord said, and I will just mention it briefly because it needs to be mentioned. We need to have a sober estimation of what America is like and why God is so meticulous in the punishments. Is God sadistic? This is a rhetorical question. God is perfect, I always said, because the Lord says that he will give America a whole judgment. A whole judgment means that it is a perfect judgment. You cannot argue with God's estimation of what the nation is. You can argue and you can, people do such childish things, but why would he say, why don't you go and pray? Why don't you stop being lazy and coming and speaking to me like I'm the butler of the house that just supposed to sit here and watch the comments all day and just answer every question. The Lord told me to stop doing that. He said so much, and I'm going to bring it out in the prophecies that are coming. Why don't you go to him since you have so much to say and get down on your knees if you claim that you are born again and ask him the same things that you ask me. I want to see if you have that same bravado in the prayer closet. Go to him and talk to him the way you talk to me. Go and tell him, but why are you saying this? And see what he will say to you like he answered Jeremiah and Habakkuk and a ton of other people before we were born. 
God's judgment is a perfect judgment. The last line that he said is Zimbabwe is going to mock America. Celestial. Tell them they know what it means. So I'm, I'm writing everything down. I'm writing, I'm writing. And then this sentence comes. Zimbabwe is going to mock America. Tell them they know what it means. So I'm, I'm thinking, is it tell Zimbabwe? Is it tell Zimbabwe that they're going to mock America and they know what it means? Or is it tell America? And then it came to me, an incident from two and a half weeks before this prophecy came. I was working on social media. The only social media I have is Facebook. So I was working on social media where I cut short clips because people have a short clip attention span there. I, I cut a short clip and then I upload it and then I synthesize the prophecy and then I put it there because the Lord is starting to really reach and minister to people there. And you know, things come on your Facebook feed. So as I'm waiting for the prophecy to, to load, I open another window and I'm just going through my feed. And then I see an ad that is so strange that it catches my, in my attention instantly. I see money fanned out like this. So it's tons and tons of bills, but it's not US dollars. It's tons and tons of bills and written across it. It says, you can be a trillionaire too. You can be a trillionaire too. And I thought, what kind of legit hoax scam is this? And so I click the ad to see what it is. I click the ad and it opens up and the information is at the top. And then at the bottom, there's about like 70 comments because it's a brand new ad. Excuse me, please. So it's about 70 comments and I quickly read and it says um, something like, you can be a trillionaire too. Because in Zimbabwe, everyone's a trillionaire, um, low, LOL, like that. And then it goes to, on to talk about how the Zimbabwean economy is useless and it's collapsed and they're out there using trillion dollar notes. And then the trillion dollar note is the highest note that has ever been used in world history. And wow, everybody's walking around with $20 trillion in their pocket. And now this money is a collector's item. So this ad was basically saying that if you like, you can buy for some nominal value, like $3 or something small like that. You can buy a Zimbabwean trillion dollar note, and then you can be a trillionaire too. That's what the ad was saying. And then there were like tons of laugh emojis because some people didn't click the ad. They would just click laugh and then they would go. So there's tons of laugh emojis. And then there's a slew of comments. How could they sit there and let their economy be destroyed? Well, you know how it is in Africa. They're not taking any care and they just basically drove the country into the wall. All kinds of things in the comments. And I'm looking and I see one man, just one man out of about 70 comments. And this one man says, be careful. Look at where we are this could happen to us. And I was thinking, is this man a Christian? He doesn't even have to have a, be a Christian. Maybe he just has common sense, you know? And so when I was thinking, what does God mean? He said Zimbabwe is going to mock America. So that part is clear, but who is the them? I realized that the them he says that we should know what it means is us. Us who stand in mockery. Us who always have something to say. Us who actually engineer the crises and the pain of others. America's the chief boogeyman behind these sanctions that have crippled the Zimbabwean economy. And I shared the Lord's words and then people came to say that I have anti-American sentiment and, and, and I'm a deep state agent and all the other interesting and, and very, you know, things that are said here. That the Lord said in another prophecy where he was speaking of the, the cruelty, the kind of approach that America has. And he was speaking of how America puts her hands on a nation and squeezes and basically chokes the life out of countries with sanctions. Something that she tried in front of all the naysayers on Russia. And Russia was like, okay, watch me move and began to basically roller skate the global economy 
and, and pull all the kids in the room to go hang out with them in their bricks house. Said that America did this to Cuba and America did this to um, Iran and did it to Iraq and basically throttles the nations and basically throttled this one and was mocking the money. The ad is still there on social media because they have quite a few variations of it. And so he said to me, tell them, and that them is us. We will never shift these prophecies off. When I say never, I mean never. They will never be shifted off because they are God's just judgment to people who deserve it. So this is the prophecy. America will be like Zimbabwe, April the 7th, 2023. I am Celestial, and this is the Master's Voice. God bless you, and thank you for being with me. Goodbye.